Hello, my name is Jorb. I love gear, and this is the Teenage Engineering EP-133 KO2. Teenage Engineering, it is a single company where $300 could be a toy car, a sweatsuit, or one-fifth of a card table. Right, also this sampler. <laughs> it seems like it's different companies making different products for different people. They're doing whatever they want, and it's cool that they're doing that, but every release really needs to be evaluated totally on its own merits, right? Uh, but this, on its own merits, a $300 sampler styled like an 80s calculator, where some of the factory sounds, a lot of the factory sounds are designed by one of my favorite sound designers. Put that one on the Discover card. Uh, yeah, it's priced in line with things like the circuit rhythm or the model samples. Uh, and it looks a lot bolder than those, that's obvious, but does it do enough to be competitive or is it $200 of slick design around $100 of sampler? Well, let's find out. You will see me uh, navigate, teach you how to navigate, teach you how to actually get a beat going. I'll give you a little performance example, uh, and then I'll sample some vinyl. This video is not sponsored. I bought it myself for full price, uh, but that's it. If you're subscribed, thanks for coming back. If you're a patron, that means the world to me. If you want to support me in any other way, my Instagram, my merch, uh, some patch packs, some sounds, affiliate links, Patreon, all that is in the description. Let's make some noise. Here we are on the table with the KO2. I've got some sounds in here already. First and foremost, I'm just going to show you basic navigation. You've got sounds already in. You want to record some sounds, get a sequence going, move around the unit. We're just going to walk through that for now. The way projects are organized, you have nine. So I hold main and then a number. That's my project one. Oops. Main and two. That's my project two. Main and three is the project I'm going to use to demonstrate. So projects one through five, I think, or one through four, already have a bunch of sounds loaded. And the way they work, group A here is drums, B is bass, C is melody, and D will be empty for you to put in whatever it is you want. And so if I want to start recording something, hold record, press play. Just hit record, it'll go away. That metronome lets you know you're live recording. You can turn it down if you'd like. If I don't like that and I want to erase a specific piece of it, I can hold erase and the pad while we go over it, while it's playing, or while I'm not playing, hold erase and the pad. It'll flash a few times, go away, and then we got nothing. Oh, I hit that sound too. So if I want to erase everything in the group, hold erase and group A, and that whole, any of those sounds will go away. Awesome, cool, you can, uh, record by stepping. So you see if I hit plus and minus right now, when we're on this main tab, I'll step through individual steps. So here's one, two, three, four. And you can plug in things like that. If you hold timing, you can do note repeat. If I want to count in, I press record and then press play. And then it'll start where I was. So if I want to get to the beginning, shift and play, stop it, press record, press play. And then I can do that note repeat to get my hi-hat in. Okay. Okay, I want to add my snare. If I want my snare to be a little louder, pick that, hit sound. And now X and Y affect that sound. X is its amplitude, its volume. And then Y will be its pitch. And notice now you see these uh, circles up in the screen. Those look pretty and silly. They all actually mean something. So this left circle is your X. This right circle is your Y. I actually really like it, a, a full octave down. Uh, and that's a good chance to highlight this screen constantly does actually mean something. <laughs> it looks like it's just like, you know, 
It looks like it's just like visual candy, but this is its screen. This is where information is being passed to you. So right now, everything means something. You can see we're in group A. That will sort of react to the sounds being played in it. Same thing for if I'm in group B. So these are all bass sounds. And if I want to play them chromatically, I hit this button, keys. And I actually have a scale set right now, uh, which you can get to in the system settings. So shift, system, and then pads, enter, scale. I have minor pentatonic on right now, and I'm going to leave it. Okay, if I want to record a bass part, I can play it live with that keys mode on, and you see right here, look what lights up. A keyboard, that's how you know you're in keys mode. Actually, I just had a realization. I bet my diffusion filter is going to make it harder to see the screen. I'm going to take it off. There you go. You can see keys is lit. Let's try this sound instead. So if I record and play, I like that, but I want more space. I want this track, I want this group to be longer. So if I hold record and hit plus, length now goes to two. And look, we're going to count up to two. And now that is twice as long uh, as what's up here. See everything in A, we'll reset at the end of one, and B, we'll reset after two. Wonderful. I want to make this bass sound a little louder. So sound, and then again our amp. What if I want to pitch it down after I've recorded these things? We have a lot of options. So I could just play it in with the keys again, with lower notes. I can pitch the individual sound. So that's when you hit sound. That's what this left fader does. And actually I'll show you now. So I have it turned all the way down. I'm gonna to go to a different group turn it all the way up, come back, and now the way the fader works, I am still have the same thing selected. I still have that note selected. If I turn the fader down, notice these lights aren't responding. Only when I start to move up. So these knobs, they're potentiometers, they're not encoders, they stop at a certain point. Because of that, options like this that would go all the way around, uh, they're relative. So they'll move up only when you move them up. They won't jump to the position you're at. But things like pitch, where the center is like your default, that will flash when, it, when you get to the middle. A lot of parameters do that. They'll flash twice to let you know they're in the middle. Okay. I want to go an octave down. So that's pitching down just the sound. Let's say I've got another sound that's also in this group, and if you hold keys... Plus and minus, you can get to a di different octave. So let's say I've got that other sound in this same group. And I want to pitch the whole group down. You can do that with the fader effects, which are these labels over your individual buttons here. So if I hold fader, press tune. I can tune everything up or down an octave. Love that. There's all sorts of other fader effects. For example, I want that um, key part, I want the keys part to be a little less bright. The fader can be on a low pass filter. And again, that affects the entire group. Mix it down a little bit less. I now think that those could use a little reverb. So if I go into effects, we have right now it's set on delay, but I don't think I had anything sent there. So here's our reverb, has length and color parameters. Hit fader and FX to become the send effects. I'm gonna turn that up. And I'm actually going to mute group A. There's a few ways you could do that. If I hold 
Um, if you hold on the groups and then move the fader down, and again, watch our screen here, see those changing? I have muted group A. So now we're just hearing group B. Have a high pass and a low pass. And again, they're relative. So I'm all the way up. Low pass. Shows you the resulting band. And if you hold fader to tell you what you're on, I can send a lot to the reverb, darken it a little. Then I also have master level, which is just the same as you could do from just holding a group and moving the fader up or down. Uh, back to main, back on the effects. A little darker, a little shorter, and I want to send a lot less. And again, there's our fader amount, which this looked like envelopes forever to me. I, th I was convinced that's what it was, but nope, that's your fader level. Just straight all the way up. Cool, we're making good progress so far. Far, I'm gonna mix A back in. In the, while you're playing, if you want to solo something, a group, hold FX, press that group. You could do multiple and bring them in like that. There is one master effect, it is a compressor. I have it turned way, way up all the time. I think that's where the sound of this device is found. Uh, where you get some character out of it. And you can actually see if the compressor is on or, or reacting with that little tube. And then these little groups of LEDs is your master level. See, I keep doing that. I, I have this ready to go in case I smudge this up. <laughs> that Q is quantized versus free. So if I hit timing, then go to plus, we're free, minus, we're quantized. Uh, you can change the timing correction settings by hitting shift and correct. Now we have swing and timing correct. I'm going to leave it on 16th. Let's go 54. Or swing, why not? The other effects, you can have a delay. has time and feedback. You can kind of self-oscillate. Back to effects. There's a reverb again. Distortion, just driving the tone. Chorus. <laughs> Here's that chorus. Because it's feedback and modulation, it's like the cow more than it is a traditional right and depth course. Great. We have a filter with variable resonance. That filter is different from the filter we put on the entire group, and that filter is different from the performance effect filter, which I'll show you later. Uh, there's another compressor in here with the same controls, drive and speed. Speed is sort of how fast it reacts. I find I want this effect to be on delay or reverb almost all of the time. Especially that with the master compressor, which is shift in FX, gives you uh, a more together sound, I would say. That lets your sound feel more, I don't know, cohesive, glued together, as the kids say. <laughs> okay, let's, I'm thinking back basic navigation stuff. Let's say this is how I want to start my track, or close to how I want to start my track. If I hit shift and commit, that will then add a second scene. So I hold main and left and right to go between them. By default, that was scene one, that was scene two. It copies over everything. So maybe even in scene one, let's say, I don't want the uh, keys part, which would be in B. 
So if I erase just the key track for that note, I turn off the effects. I've just got my bass line, and I want to move to the next scene, main and plus. It'll wait for the end of the note. And then that moves us into our next scene. And so maybe you are in scene two. Oh, I want the drums to be part of scene two. I had them muted. So hold A and bring it back up. They're back in. But right now, if I go back to scene one, the drums are still there. So what do the different scenes mean? It's note information for these tracks. It isn't any of the group parameters, including your mix level here. So any of these fader effects that you expect to change with the scenes, they won't. So even right now, we can just use the drums as an example. If I low pass really, really low, move to the next scene. They're still low pass really low. That can be good or bad depending on, the, on how you think of it. I don't know if I like that it works that way or not. I just think it's worth mentioning that it does. But again, scene one, I don't want the drums here. I just had to mute it first so I can destroy. I can delete everything in that group by holding erase and A. So now we're back to it. So you can sort of build a track that way. You can sort of build a track piece by piece that way. Oh, this is how I want it to start. This is how I want it to change. Uh, and I could, of course, record totally different, you know. Uh, bass parts in there, I might as well. That's fine. You guys will just notice that it's different. <laughs> so you can use scenes for a lot of scene structuring. I come from the NPC world, the NPC language. I think of that as a sequence, kind of. <laughs> it's different information for your tracks, for your individual sounds here. Um, but some of the settings that, you know, I guess an equivalent in the NPC world would carry over with that. Uh, are not carrying over here for basic navigation. I'm going to load up another project now. So if I want to load another project, what's what's a good one? I think four. This is another project. I'm just going to show you how I might go through a live performance because I think that's what uh, this is really, really good at. It's, it's fun. It's hands-on for performing things live. I'm just going to run you through a little bit and tell you what I'm doing. Adding in a little bit of effects. Turning up another channel. Looping it. That was a bad loop, I didn't like it. Moving to another scene. On that scene I have another part. Punch it effects. Forgot that one did that. And then... Too high. Need more reverb. Recorded that in, punch it effects. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a little stiff, a little uh, underprepared, uh, but you get the point. So the big new things I showed you were... So the big new things I showed you were uh, looping. So shift and tempo. Your right side here, your Y, is the length of the loop, and X is where it's starting. This is one of the places where I can most feel I wish these were encoders and not potentiometers. I wish these were a full 360 degree range of motion so I could just keep scrolling until I found the part I liked. Uh, and where not having absolute position really, really is annoying. So I want to go a little bit left, and whatever I changed adjusted, I was all the way left. That is uh, kind of a big pain in the ass. Uh, but that looping is cool. And then I showed you all the punch and effects. So if you hold effects, uh, each of these 12, there's a different punch and effect. Haha, -ha, KO. Some of them are related to the labels that are there for the fader effects, so like low pass, high pass, 
Makes sense. Time is like a bit crush. Pitch makes sense. And these are all, I'm using more pressure. Levels of mono tremolo. Pan is a stereo tremolo. It also has a little bit of filter. Releases a tape stop. My favorite. I also think a great way to start a track. By slowly rising up on that. Attack is a loop. Tune is a loop with pitch shifting. Velocity is that. <laughs> and mod is that. I th my favorites. Using high and low pass together as a band and the tape stop. I think that sort of use case, I think that sort of like, oh, I've coordinated this in advance. I know what I'm going to do. Or at least you know, you know what you're going to sequence in advance, and then you play with it with all these punching effects. I, can, I think that can be really, really strong. And it's just fun. When this is fun, I think it's at its best. Uh, and that is a lot of the time. Once you get over that learning curve, um, where to put it? This quick start guide helps a lot. It's it's just kind of tough to read, but this backside is uh, I think is pretty like organized like kind of poorly. But what what it is is oh in the sound menu each of these straight line combinations is something you can do. In main these are all the straight line combinations you can do. So just here right, just shift and plus shift and minus. This is not a flow of of different steps to achieve something. Okay, this is everything you can do in main. This is everything you can do when you have output selected. Does that make sense? So like right here, the section that says output, when you hit shift and FX to get you to output, now X does this, Y does this, that's what this icon might mean. Oh, okay, when I hit sound, these are all my options. So I got to the point where I was like looking for a specific thing. So I was like, oh, mute groups. Let me just scan all these pieces of text. And I found actually what I think is an error or something that changed after beta. So this says, if you're in sound, let's get on A. And by default, those are in a mute group. Let's say I want to put those in a mute group. It says, hold shift and press keys. That does not do that. It doesn't do that at all. To actually get to the mute group, it is edit, and then you can see I already had it selected. But you have all the way to mute group, and then when it's flashing, nothing selected. And then what's solid, that's everything in the mute group. Each group has one mute group, as far as I understand it. Uh, but that is not uh, what they tell you in the quick start guide. So that's annoying. I was using the online guide. Um, it's a bunch of different sections. It is not that bad to navigate. But I want to just control F uh, every time I run into something I can't figure out. And they're all on separate pages. It's not one PDF, so it's kind of hard to do that. But as far as playing parts in, recording a sequence, performing over that, I think this does a great job. Uh, it reminds me way more of an NPC than anything in the SP range. I guess I haven't tried the Mark II in that way. Because I would be using a resampling workflow... Uh, on a 303 or 404, and this doesn't do that. It, it it wants you to sequence more than anything else. Actually mentioning that, mentioning resampling, mentioning the SP series, uh, I think a few things come together to make the KO2 pretty limited in a very specific situation. That is sampling from vinyl. So I was trying to get something put together and then show you how I got there, but I, I, I've run into enough roadblocks that I'll just start recording and show you what I'm dealing with. Uh, this record is... <laughs> God, it's a 60s porn soundtrack. <laughs> it's crazy cool. I can't show you the backside. Don't worry about it. A lot of it sucks, but but I have a few things pulled out, out of it right now. That's a crazy good <laughs> drum break. And I have this tempo synced to it. I literally just tapped in and then adjusted. So I have this looping, no problem. I could even double that line. Yeah, and that loops pretty well for me. I got that, and I was trying to work some other stuff out, and then I ran into my issues. So I'll show you what sampling looks like. So I'll show you what sampling looks like. So when you press on sample, your X and Y, whoops, your X and y become uh, the level of the input and how much of that you're sending to the effects. I'm not going to send any to the effects. If you cycle through... Plus and minus, you get left, center, right, and in stereo. And again, look at our screen here. Stereo, mono, 
and this is what your mono source is. This record's in mono, so I'm going to leave it on center. I want to get the organ part there. Uh, you hold on a pad. <laughs> Okay, main. That is pretty good. And then our sound editing parameters. Um, it, it can be one shot, where it runs all the way through. Key, where it runs while it's pressed, or legato. Uh, or if you trigger it multiple times, it won't start at the beginning again. So you could, like, use keys mode. You could use the keys mode where it's all different pitches and glide around. I'm going to leave it on keys for my demonstration. Uh, you can trim it here. Uh, this doesn't need to be trimmed. This intro needs to be trimmed, though. I want to trim that just to where the, the sticks, the clicks happen. And so... God, I hate that it does this, but your start and stop are X and Y. As soon as you move it, it starts playing the sound from anywhere. Um, that would be nice if these were precise at all, but because you have to, like, wiggle it in, you just hear so much annoying, annoying noise. That's pretty close, so now I hold shift. Go up. Not quite. So that's it. That's how you trim. Um, I think these tiny little knobs that stop when you push them too far and, and do a million other functions, that's a terrible user interface element to trim with. Terrible. <laughs> that works well enough for me. Where's my other? So let's try something here. So if I shift commit, that'll get us to another sequence. And I will erase this. And just on the very first uh, measure here, I'll hit that. And I want to make sure, go back to edit, that this is on one shot. So it'll run all the way through. Just not quite long enough. Yeah, it doesn't start with the organs. It starts a little earlier. Okay, so this is actually, I'll just use this as an opportunity. So if I want to get rid of that sound that I've already picked, 76, go into sound, click to it, and hold erase and sound. And so then I'm not wasting up precious little memory. I actually filled up the memory on this already, just dumping some samples on it. <laughs> anyway, there you go. That's how you delete. I'm going to sample again. Give myself a little more leeway. A lot extra. Okay, main. So now, if we go back here, edit, I want it to be one shot again. That's looping pretty well. So there, let's go back to scene one. There's scene one. Scene two, not perfect. But you get what I'm trying to show you. Another way to use scenes. So, I want that to stop. Um, the thing that really, I was like, oh, this is limited for this application. Because you don't have resampling, which I think it should. And here's a little example of what I want to do. I have that. I want to high pass that and play along with it. I can't high pass just that part because it's not in our sound edit anywhere. Okay, and if it's not in our sound edit anywhere, I can do it per group. So if I go to another group, there it is, high pass. So this can work for cutting out drums and stuff. First of all, the high pass doesn't do a great job. The 303 has like the isolator, which is a much, much better job, stuff like that. But maybe there's a chance if I could resample, I could do it a couple times or, or try a couple different things to really get in there. Like, I'm down with that enough, but... Anyway, because you can't resample, now I've wasted an entire other group. If I want to have some things high-passed, some things low-passed, 
They can't all be the same value, and they can't be in the same group at all. Almost immediately, the way I think of of cutting records and, and putting records together, you run into some problems. Does that mean you can't get dope stuff off of records? Of course not. But in terms of like, in terms of what I'm used to being able to do, chopping up a record, putting different elements around, because you know they're in time, you know they're in key. This is is kind of limited in that way. I will show you something I think is cool. I haven't really tried out yet. So if I go to sound edit here, and I set the timing, and I sync it to the BPM. I go to tempo and turn it down. It'll use this time stretch to line up. So if you find the tempo of whatever it is you're trying to, you know, use as like a loop, like this can do a pretty good job. Anything below, you hear it's like a 303 style like pitched delays which honestly I think that's kind of a vibe. <laughs> if I put it on the reverb I said a bunch of this there I think this could really really hit uh, but yeah, if I'm being honest, it's kind of all I want to show you with the records. A lot of that workflow-specific stuff that I would like to do, you can't really do. This can, of course, uh, has a microphone in it. You can sample right into it. So, setter input level, you set a threshold to start recording. This is a test of the built-in microphone. This. Whoops. Uh, this is a test of the built-in microphone. I'm going to turn off our compressor here. This is a test of the built-in microphone. I think it sounds kind of good. This, and of course, you can manipulate this just like you can any other sound. This, 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 this is this, this is a test of the this is a test of the built-in microphone. Uh, I think it is a, a pretty good job for that. And I've also used the web editor, which was pretty slick. Uh, I'm annoyed with software that isn't a download that's just a web app because who knows when it's not going to be available uh when you need it before a show or whatever so just in principle i would rather that be software or best case scenario when you plug this in over usb it just works like a regular drive so i would prefer that i will say the the sample management web app uh, worked well was was quick i have a bunch of samples that i put on just that were on my computer already and they are single note hits from a bunch of old keyboards. And let's add a little bit of release on the envelope. Uh, I like that sampling function. I like using this for one shots. I like using it for sampled instruments. Does well for that. I honestly don't see the need to put drums on this. I use the count drums anyway. I've used the memory banks. You've seen me use golden hats almost exclusively. And that is in here. What is it? Two fifteen. Yeah, golden hat. That's literally one of the exact same hi hats that I use for years. I think the count drums are, are some of the best. They're perfect for my style, my preference. So I, I really don't think I need to put drums on here for myself. But if you do, that sample editor is very, very easy, uh, especially like mono, drum machine stuff, techno stuff. You know, you're not going to run out of space. Yeah, this is a little less than I thought it would be. I thought I would get a lot more out of sampling from a record, but it didn't feel great for that for me. Certainly not exactly. I was trying to do exactly what I did in my SP303 video, where I use a bunch of different components I got out of the same record, and I use those to build up a track. Is that possible here? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But I can see in a lot of cases where it is limited. Also, there's no reverse that's crazy. If anything, can I invert trim the start and end points? Whatever reason this cannot do reverse, God, I hope that changes because <laughs> that is a huge pain in the ass. Uh, you got to have resampling and you got to have reverse. This is missing those things. It's not like, oh, I wish I had those. This is missing those things in my eyes. I guess I'll comment on, on design and, and build all at once. Uh, I love the way this looks. I love the style this has. I wish anything else had this much style, okay? <laughs> that aside, I don't quite understand the Lego thing. If you aren't like aware of it, this has like Lego connection points all over. 
Um, these are Lego studs. It has like space for Technics rods on the sides. I had a friend bring over some Bionicle arms and we stuck it on. On the bottom, even, you can pull out the feet and those are the dimensions of a brick. And I'm pretty sure that the dimensions of every button and every... I'm, I'm pretty sure the dimensions of everything are Lego dimensions. These are two by two tiles. There's a one by two space between them. These are one by two. Like everything is Lego dimensioned. Um, it's interesting. It's quirky. It's cool. I don't see like, I, but I don't think I get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? If that's, oh, the mock-up started, you know, with these dimensions and we put pots on like whatever, chill. Like it's cool to carry that through to the final design. Uh, is there like a functional reason? I don't think so. You don't need it to be Lego compatible to make a stand out of Legos, you know? So I think that's just Teenage Engineering being quirky. I like that they did it. It's a cool thing to see. It's a cool thing to figure out. But in terms of build quality, you can tell looking at this, this is a single circuit board. This is a single flat circuit board. Behind this screen, I, I bet these are all single LEDs, a whole grid of white LEDs that go through this colored piece of plastic. It's a very, very clever design that becomes very, very stylish because of what they've done with it. These feel like laptop keyboard switches to me. These are rubber tops on, you know, like a normal service mounted switch. I don't think these are nice potentiometers or a nice fader. I'm not saying it's a bad thing that it's built to a price point because it's just fascinating to see. And you can really, really tell this is one flat circuit board. Um, and that makes you think more of the pocket operators, right, than it does any of the other top-of-the-line teenage engineering stuff. I am getting this out a little bit later than some other people. People are having problems with their faders. The fader is asked to do a lot by this operating system. The way you interact with the KO2, you should be using the fader a lot. If faders are arriving broken, that's a huge, huge problem. Teenage engineering has to address it. I don't know what that's going to look like. Some people are saying that it's broken after they needed to use too much force to push these knobs on. I will say... The knobs are really tight on all of these. It is, um, and again, I think it's like a Technics connection. I wasn't careful about pushing it on. I pushed it on as hard as it needed to, and I've had no problems. You can see that this is accurate, but I certainly don't doubt that that is an inexpensive part. I recommend you go through the official channels, especially on a new product, uh, and it's better if Teenage Engineering knows how many of these are fucked up and has to deal with it. You know what I mean? If a thousand people fix it themselves, that's a thousand that TE doesn't have to fix. And if that many are broken, that it is truly their responsibility. But you can disassemble this and fix the fader. I'll link you to somebody's video I, I saw just today who did a very, very good job, who did a nice job of, of showing what you need to do uh, to bend some connections back in place for the fader. I have had no issues. I, I hope nobody else does either. But I think that's it. I think this is fun and flexible, is a sequencing workflow. That is the way you should interact with it. Um, and that's where it does best, having one shots that you're piecing together. Uh, even though the time stretch, work, time stretch works great, trimming is such a huge, huge pain in the ass on these dumbass little knobs that I don't want to chop up a bigger sample. I have no interest in, in doing that. So that's my like use case recommendation. You have one shots of drums, you have sampled instruments, and you're building with a sequence. Really, really nails that. And it's most of all, it's fun to sit and use it. It's going to look great on Instagram. So I think Teenage Engineering has a winner. Am I going to keep it? I'm going to sit on it for a day or two. There you go. That's all I got to say. My name is Dorb. I love gear. That does include the EP133 KO2 from Teenage Engineering. Thanks for watching. Cheers and so long.